Peter Dimicelli would be investigated for running prostitution out of his business. So he's not quite as clean. But but I you know, I don't know. I don't know that it means he was getting <laughs> shaken shake down. down. Now we're gonna kind of pivot away from the extortion and just focus on Peter Shortino. Tensions in the Milwaukee Mafia family were up a little bit in June 1964 when Frank Balestri found out that another Peter Shortino had come to Milwaukee from Tucson, Arizona. <laughs> Short, this Shortino was an alleged member of the Joe Bonanno crime family and had spoken with John Aliotto, uh and Frank Balestri was not informed about him being in town. According to Mafia Protocol, Balestri should have been informed that a member of another Mafia family was in town. Remind me, the Joe Bonanno crime family, what is that? Is that Chicago? That is New York. New York. Uh, and okay. Joe Bonanno is one of the biggest mob guys in, in American history. Like That's terrible. That Top of the top. You know, for all those people out there that are really into the mob and they're like, what the hell is this guy doing on no. this podcast? Not knowing who Joe Bonanno is. No, it's a I, good question. Because if you don't know, people don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know I recognize the name. I just couldn't put where it, you know. Yeah, so so Joe Bonanno was one of the big guys in New York, and he was the guy who would get the most headlines, the most newspaper coverage. The story, exactly how this plays out is debatable, but basically there's rumors that he was trying to take over other mafia families in New York, and he basically went into self-exile down to, like, Phoenix, Arizona. And rather than them assassinating him, they just kind of said, stay out of New York. <laughs> so he instead has like this separate, he's, his crime family still operating in New York, but he's got this separate little small mob group in Arizona. Okay. And that that's he, where this guy came from. That's where this guy came from. Yeah. Okay. Here's where it gets weird. The Peter Shortino of Tucson, Arizona was both a cousin and a brother-in-law of the Peter Shortino of Milwaukee. Also, yes. he operated a bakery. <laughs> so, so they're cousins. They have the same grandfather. Mm -hmm. On top of this, the Peter Shortino of Milwaukee is married to the Peter Shortino of Tucson's sister. Wow. Which would mean that he's married to his own cousin. Wow. So it's weird. <laughs> but now, it, it, uh, isn't that somewhat normal in Italian It's somewhat normal. Because they're very close and yeah. they end up marrying very closely to each they other. They do. I think, I think, like, you know, marrying your cousin cousin is kind of weird. weird. But, yeah, it's not out of the ordinary. But, but there's... Generally, their marriage, there is going to be like a shorter gap between them in re relation, basically. Correct. Like second, third cousins are not uncommon or anything like Correct. that. Correct. I don't know if we talked about that on here or on the Patreon, but yes, that's a, that's our fancy word called consanguinity. <laughs> and uh, yes, there's been studies that in Italy, generally husbands and wives are closer related, related than they are in other countries. countries. I don't know why. It's some kind of cultural thing, but... While in Milwaukee, the Tucson Shortino purchased a 1964 Buick Electra at Frescona Buick in Wauwatosa. Here's another fun part. The owner of Frescona Buick is a man named Frank Balistrieri. Which is not our Frank Balistrieri. Which is not. <laughs> he is a cousin of our Frank Balistrieri. So a cousin of our Peter Shortino bought a Buick from a cousin of R. Frank Balestrieri. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You can imagine how much fun the, <laughs> when they're this. writing these reports, trying to keep these things straight. straight. Yeah. yeah. A hidden microphone uh, caught a mafia meeting in June 18th, 1964, where one member of the group was uh, scolded for not functioning properly. Uh, Balistrieri was upset that this Peter Shortino had come from Tucson and was entertained without him being notified. So they caught him on a on a hidden microphone actually complaining about <laughs> it. But he's like, this guy comes around, you don't even tell me. <laughs> At a meeting on June 30th, 1964, the Peter Shortino of Tucson is still in town. 
Uh, so he's called to a mob meeting. Uh, Bellistry tries to talk to him about the Bonanno family, but Shortino said that he was just a soldier in the Bonanno family and was not authorized to say anything without clearance from his boss, who would be Charles Battaglia. Bellistry agreed. He goes, technically, yes, you're right. So I guess we won't have this conversation. conversation. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Milwaukee's Peter Shortino was interviewed by the FBI in March 19th, 1965. They asked if he had family in Tucson. And Shortino explained, again, that the other Peter was his cousin and his brother-in-law. He said that the Tucson Peter was in Milwaukee in 1964 and was away to New York and Canada to visit relatives. The Milwaukee Peter said he didn't know if the Tucson Peter was in the Mafia, but wouldn't be surprised if he was and knew that he had business dealings with Joe Bonanno. The Milwaukee Peter had met Bonanno, but had not seen him in years. He explained that he had met him because his wife's family, which is also his cousin's <laughs> family, had grown up a block away from Bonanno in New York when they were kids, so they had just known him forever. The Milwaukee Peter said that after his bakery was bombed, he had told the Tucson Peter about it. There was a rumor that the Tucson Peter then told Joe Bonanno, who in turn told Frank Balistrieri, <laughs> to leave the Milwaukee Peter alone. But the Milwaukee Peter never asked for this favor and did not know if it actually happened. This was just a rumor he had heard. He lastly said that, if this wasn't confusing enough, he has two more cousins also named Peter Shortino, and they both live in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to try to piece this back together. So Yeah, run it back. So, so Joe Bonanno, there's a rumor that Joe Bonanno called Frank Balistrieri and said, leave alone the Milwaukee Peter Shortino. Yes. Which would... Really, Joe Bonanno has no reason to care about the Milwaukee one, right? He was probably talking about the Tucson one that was in Milwaukee. He has really no reason to do that, but he it doesn't mean he couldn't do it. But why would he? If I guess if if, if the Tucson Peter Shortino asked that favor, he could do it. Technically, bosses are equal, and he shouldn't be able to do anything about it. But Joe Bonanno's kind of like, you know, he's a big guy, so and he could he could he could probably ask favors of smaller small families, family. being like, "Hey, give this guy in Milwaukee a pass. He's he's close with one of my guys." You know, I don't know. I think if that happened. It's, it's so much behind the scenes that, like, we would never know how that played out. Because I'm going to go on record as saying, I think the Milwaukee Peter Shortino is being honest. Mm -hmm. I think that he did not ask for that. And I think that he doesn't know um, what if happened. If it actually even happened. If it even happened. Really. And I think, I think he's being a little, when he says he doesn't know if his cousin's in the mafia. I mean... He's kind of on the fence. He goes, I don't know, but I wouldn't doubt it. Mm -hmm. I think he probably knows. knows yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think he probably knows. And then, like, where he denies that he's being, like, asked to make payments, that's where I find that a little oh, questionable. Please. Because if he's not being asked to make payments, then why was he bombed? Yeah. Like, you don't just get randomly bombed, bombed. without, you know, being told why you're getting bombed. Mm -hmm. So that's weird to me. So I don't think he's like complete. I don't think he's lying, but I don't think he's completely telling everything. Either. Well, and, and don't you think that in most scenarios when somebody is pulled in by the cops and interviewed by the police, uh -huh. that's probably the, what they're doing. You yeah. know, they're, they're probably they're telling the truth tr to an extent, but they are. I think in every situation, probably somebody leaves something out. Well, you know. I, I will respond to that and say I think I think most people when they talk to the police are probably mostly honest. Right. I think maybe a little less so in these sort of mafia situations because 
the Milwaukee 